So we are going to ask about the April energy forecast, uh, but I'm going to start with a question about the eclipse on April 8th. For those of you who aren't aware, there's an eclipse coming up on April 8th, and there's a lot of buzz out there about how this might be related to uh, the return of Christ and how uh, it's going through seven different cities named Nineveh or the meaning of which is Nineveh or something. I've heard all kinds of things. <laughs> so uh, I'm just curious if Prime Creator has anything to share about that situation. And does this have anything to do with the return of Jesus? Um, is there, you know, something we should be paying attention to or looking forward to or just anything Prime Creator wants to say about that? So... Dear ones, as we have discussed many times before, there will be celestial alignments and arrangements in the heavens, so to speak. And humans will make meaning out of many things that they see as the stars come into certain alignments and arrangements. What is important to note is that there is a very intense return, so to speak, of Christ or Christ consciousness right now on planet Earth. It has always been here, but the return is that there is now a much more expansive awakening in the hearts of humans in relation to the energy of Christ, Christ consciousness, Jesus, Yeshua, whatever name you want to ascribe to this man, to this consciousness, there is a much greater awakening in the hearts of humanity, that this is an energy that is here and that is coming in full force to assist humanity. And so you will continue to see arrangements of celestial beings in your skies, whether you call them stars or planets. You will continue to experience certain alignments that help to organize the energy of the Christ consciousness coming into planet Earth. And it is always wise to receive as much of this energy as you are willing, as you have capacity for. Because this is the new Earth energy. This is part of what is forming and creating the new Earth. And so the more that you can embody, the more you are embodying new earth frequency, new earth energy. To answer specifically, will you see the physical return of Jesus 40 days after this eclipse event on April 8th? I will say, dear one, that anything is possible. That is what I will say about this, to keep your hearts and minds open, to be ready to receive. Yeah, with that connection here, I watched a video from a friend here that he put out a couple of days ago. And in that video, he showed a picture and he explained he got an email from uh, someone. Uh, that uh, watches elephants for quite a while. And that person says, oh, elephants, they're acting crazy. They are looking for higher elevations. And that other person with that email, she contacted, or that person contacted other ones. And other people have that same, uh, they see the same thing in animals uh, looking for higher grounds. Is there something coming up? 
because animals are always aware of upcoming earthquakes or other things. The animals know when there is potential for great amounts of water to be covering the land. And just because they are seeking higher ground does not mean that it's going to happen, but they are following their instincts of what could possibly happen. Even those who live in desert areas or areas that typically do not get much precipitation need to be aware that as earth goes through changes, there are very real possibilities for flooding, for homes to be damaged or even washed away. And so it is wise to have a plan of where to access, how to access higher ground. Especially if you live at sea level, it is important to have an understanding of where you might go if the waters do rise. Those of you who are paying attention, who are listening to your bodies, who receive dreams at night, who are doing your spiritual inner work to stay connected to the intelligence of all that is, have nothing to worry about. You will be given information as it is needed, if it is needed. And it is also good to be practical and have a plan in place. So you can Observe the animals and what they are doing, and this will give you information as well about how you might need to navigate. I will describe April as a month where the energies are simmering and percolating. The energy is not yet explosive, but it is starting to bubble in preparation for greater intensity and when i use the word intensity i wish you to receive it at, as This is not something to fear that things are getting more intense, but an understanding that you will be seeing more truth, more disclosure will be unfolding. The collective may be experiencing this as very intense in an unpleasant way, but those of you who have been following and paying attention will actually experience some relief that the information is finally coming out and being revealed. And so April will be a month where the information is not fully revealed to the public, but it is percolating. More and more people will start to understand. More and more people will start to see what has been hidden in the shadows, what has been behind the veil. And there will be a generalized excitement in the collective energy. Some will understand why, some will not understand, some will interpret the excitement as anxiety, some will interpret the excitement as relief, some will interpret the excitement as motivation, energy, and fuel to move forward. It simply depends where each being is in their understanding and on this journey of unfoldment. But now things are beginning to ramp up to a speed at which the 
disclosure, the unfolding, the new earth emerging cannot be stopped, cannot be slowed down even. Yes, the shadow will continue to create inversions and distraction, but make no mistake, dear ones. The timeline is now in full on effect for the emerging of new earth, for the return of Christ, as I have explained earlier. All is in divine alignment, dear ones. I I invite those of you receiving this message to receive the frequencies coming to planet Earth now and to use them for your missions, to use them as motivation, as creativity, to use them as forward momentum. This time may require a large degree of trust that what I am saying is in fact true, that we are moving into the new earth frequencies and it cannot be stopped. Those who resonate with this, I do invite you to put your full faith and trust into this, to take bold moves. to take big action when it is called for. Most of all, to follow your heart, your intuition, your body, to listen to the voice of your soul. You have been wanting this planet to look very different. For a long time, there has been a longing in your souls, in your hearts, for drastic change to be made on this planet. You are in the midst of this change now, dear ones. It is full speed ahead from here on out. There is no stopping what God has ordained. There is no stopping what is in divine order. The shadow is being fully illuminated including the shadow within each of you. And so allow it, allow yourselves to be exposed, allow your shadows to be illuminated, allow yourselves to be vulnerable, to truly see all aspects of yourselves. This is ascension. When you see and love every aspect of yourself when you integrate every aspect of yourself. Yes, um, I have a question that um, might help out a lot of people who used to be involved with the uh, born again movements, you know, with the worship of Jesus and, and moving from that to spirituality and true source. So my question is, Recently, Susie's been doing the blood of Jesus to cook code down and transmute uh, everything. It kind of, I've been doing it. It cuts my time relatively shorter. I feel really good. My question with that is who Jesus is he, he in his light form, is he to be worshiped or just, just bring in his energy? Who is Jesus to, to help out people that, you know, may be queasy about the Jesus thing? Thank you. I will say, dear one, that as many beings as there are on this planet, there are that many understandings of who Jesus is. Even he himself asked, who do you say that I am? And so truly, it is up to each being's interpretation, perception, and understanding. He is going to be different to each person. 
And while I know that this is perhaps not the answer that you were looking for, it is truly for each human to have their own individual relationship and understanding. And to answer your question about, is he to be worshiped? This would depend upon your understanding of what worship is. I will say, Jesus is to be integrated. And this would be the most truest, pure form of worship. What I mean by this is Jesus, Christ consciousness, again, whatever name you want to ascribe, to integrate this energy means to receive the consciousness of Christ, all of the teachings, all of the experiences he went through, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, all of these things, you are meant to do the same. Not in exactly the same way. Again, it will be different for each person. But to die to yourself, to die to your old life, to recreate yourself anew over and over and over. This is your personal resurrection. Your integration of all your aspects. As I mentioned earlier, this is your ascension. So all of the things that Jesus went through and that he demonstrated and he showed humanity how to do it, this is what you are meant to do as well. This is the true meaning of being a Christian. And if you do not like that label, you do not need to wear it, but you can still receive the codes of Christ. Even if you do not believe literally the story of Christ and what was demonstrated in the Bible that he did, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, even if you feel like it was a fable or a demonstration of some sort, you can still receive those codes and use them in your life for your growth. I will say this as well, that in the awakening experience of many humans, many humans have thought to themselves, Was I Jesus in another life? Because their experiences through their awakening carried the codes of death, resurrection, and ascension. And they related to Jesus's experience on many levels and in many ways. So to be clear, none of you are the incarnation or the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. But many of you have integrated many of the codes that he brought forth to this planet. And so the truest worship is not to make him separate from you. Not to say, oh, this man did this amazing thing and he is much better than I am and I could never be like him. He told you that you will do greater things than he did. Will you receive that, dear ones? Will you integrate the codes that he brought you, the teachings? the energies, the experiences, 
the templates that he placed on this planet. I understand this is a long answer to this question. However, it is important that you have a deeper understanding of how to work with the knowledge that this man brought. It is important that each of you come to your own understanding, your own connection, your own relationship with this man i will say this as well that much of the wound that comes from religion is being told what to do instead of developing and being encouraged to cultivate your own understanding your own relationship Those who were told how to have a relationship with Jesus or what kind of relationship to have, that is where the wound is. Those who cultivated their own personal relationship, it is much easier for them to heal any religious wounds because of their own personal connection. And it is time, dear ones, to let go of your religious wounds. It is time to, for yourself, cultivate and develop your own relationship with this man, Jesus, so that you have your own heart knowing, your own soul knowing about who this being is. I thank you for this question. Did I? Yes, Prime Creator, earlier you were talking about the importance of um, trying to absorb and be accepting of the energy coming in. Can you talk a bit more about the best and easiest way to make sure that we're doing that most effectively? Thank you. Thank you, dear one. This will be different according to each person because each person is wired differently. Each person has different receptors open. Each person has a different relationship with energy. So it depends upon your wiring, what receptors are open, but it starts with your intention. And you can ask yourself, you can ask your body, how can I best receive, assimilate, integrate the incoming energies for my highest good? And see what your body says. For the most part, there are some standard things to do, as we have discussed many times, spending time in nature, drinking pure water, eating pure food, doing your inner work so that you can maintain your clarity, maintain the purity of your being. The more pure you are, the easier it will be to integrate the incoming energies. And so anything you can do to restore purity within your body and being will assist in integrating the energies. And it is not just within your own body, it is also your within your environment, your relationships, your friendships, your circumstances, to maintain as much purity as possible in all these other areas as well. I, I've been hearing that um, Lemuria may be arising and I don't know if you have any insights or thoughts about that to share. You can expect to see certain rearrangements on your planet earth. Things that have been under the water may rise up. Things that have been high above sea level may fall down you may see the landscape of the planet changing and new landscapes new landscapes developing so i will answer it in this way because it is a question more than just for lemuria there are other land masses that may rise up from the water there are other land masses that may crumble down that have been above sea level 
you can expect to see these types of earth changes. There is no guarantee, but it is very possible that these will happen. It depends on how planet Earth needs to navigate into her new Earth emerging. It depends on the humans and the energies they are holding and embodying. It depends on if there are certain energies that need to be released from within the Earth. There are many factors involved, and so it is difficult to say exactly what will happen or when or if, because there are many moving parts, so to speak. We will conclude this transmission with a reminder to honor yourself, honor your body, honor your spirit. Each of you receiving this message is at a different level, in a different place in your journey. You have different understandings of your own life, of what this reality is all about, about what is unfolding on this planet. Each of you has your own unique lens through which you understand. And it is important that you honor your own understanding. Be receptive and open to what others have to share as you may gain insight from others. That is why you're on this planet together. And if you have a knowing that is yours, it is important to honor it, to stay true to your own wisdom, your own intuition. And do not allow someone to sway you away from yourself, away from your own knowing, away from your own truth. To honor the self means to value yourself, to hold yourself in high regard to make decisions that are right for you so that you can be in greater service. When you live your life aligned to what is right for your soul, you can execute your soul mission with greater clarity, greater potency, greater power. And so it is important to listen to your own self to your own wisdom and intuition and to cultivate your relationship with yourself, to cultivate your listening of your soul voice, the voice of your heart, the voice of your spirit. And again, as we have discussed many times, You can purify yourself to do this by spending time in nature, eating pure food, drinking pure water, streamlining your life so that you are focusing on what is most important. I thank you, dear ones. Thank you everyone for watching these videos. I'll see you in the next one.